Yeah. Talk to Art. We actually did ask Art if, it's, if the atmosphere is different on fan appreciation night uh, than it is normally. There's a little bit more juice in the building to start the game, probably. Uh, but it's, you know, it's fun. I'm, it's, it's been a tradition here, and I'm glad it's something that we've continued. I think our fans look forward to it. Uh, what about this? After winning two games, then you get a week off. Is that a good time for a break like that, or did you need it? I, I think we needed one. It's, it's been a grind. Uh, you know, we had our first bye over Christmas, which is kind of a weird time to have a bye. Um, you know, especially with guys trying to travel home uh, with the airline fiasco that was going on at that time. So I'm not sure that was very enjoyable for them. And I think this one, just to kind of catch their breath and heal up some of those bumps and bruises, get some rehab, and, uh, you know, and I'll be ready for the stretch run these last six, six weeks. Yeah, obviously you have some time to watch film of yourself. You know, generally you're just moving on to the next game, a quick evaluation of yourself and put together a, a small clip tape for the guys to watch the next next practice. But, uh, you know, this allows you to really take a step back, see where we are from a statistical standpoint, analytical standpoint, what's working, what's not. Uh, and, you know, what do we need to change as we move forward and start to see some of these teams for the second time through. I mean, it happens to everybody. You, you know, not many teams play great for 30 straight games. And, you know, I've said it other years, and, and uh, you know, Bruce Rasmussen is the one that told me this from his coaching days, and it's exactly right. You, you know, there's about a third of your games you play really, really well, and you wish you could bottle that up and have that team every night. There's a third that you just play okay, but usually good enough to win. And then there's probably a third of your games that you wonder who the heck is that team, and and those are the nights that you just hope you find a way to survive, uh, because if you know if you play that way against a good team, you're going to get beat, um, and it's it's happened to a lot of teams across college basketball. Kansas has lost a couple in a row. UConn, after a great start, you know, hit a tough patch. But I think that just happens to everybody, and you know how can, how do you get through it, and and can you grow through something like that, through through adverse times like that? And I think without a doubt that this team grew during that six game stretch. And uh, you know, hopefully that's gonna help us as we as we try to finish this season off with a bang. Do you enjoy that aspect of, of it maybe that, you know, some teams are going through the adversity now and you guys went through it back in the summer? It'd be pretty cold hearted to wish that on anybody. Uh, so I don't know that I enjoy it, uh, having been there as a coach. Uh, what do you mean appreciate it? I don't understand your question. Had that earlier, that, that yeah, we're still not immune to it. I mean, we still got we got 12 tough games left. Uh, but, you know, it, it, it happens for a variety of reasons. Sometimes it's, you know, it's who you play and, and sometimes more importantly, when you play them. Are they at full strength? Are they without a guy or two? And, and then the same can be said for your team. Are you at full strength and just played poorly or are you missing some pieces or some or part of the pieces sick and not performing at, at a high level? So you hope you can avoid that the best best you can. And we've had that problem at the end of seasons. Uh, we've never really had one in the middle like we had uh, this year. Yeah, I was really encouraged by the way our bench played at Butler. You know, that was it was good to see some guys come off and, and really have an impact. And some of them had an impact without scoring, uh, which is which is good to see. So, uh, you know, defensively, I think we're back to where I wanted to be. Uh, you know, I, I, I wasn't totally comfortable with the way we we're defending at the start of the year, and we certainly took a step back during that six-game stretch. But I think we're I think we understand who we are better defensively now. Uh, I think Baylor has a better understanding, kind of being the new guy to that mix. Uh, you know, of, of you know, we're going to take a few chances, and if but don't foul, don't make a mistake. Let Kalkbrenner deal with it at the rim, and I think we've done a better job of that. Um, offensively, the ball's moving. Uh, I think we're taking pretty good shots, which is you know something we always aim to have happen. It's 
Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know that I ever go into a game saying that it's going to happen at this time. You kind of get a feel for the game. You know, you don't ever want to break up a hot lineup, uh, guys that are playing really well together. So sometimes you'll ride someone a little bit longer if things are going really well. And sometimes a guy gets off to a slow start and he needs a little reboot. Uh, so you can, you can get somebody in a little quicker form. So um, we kind of feel that out as the game goes on. Uh, but, uh, you know, Kalkbrenner's getting back into condition. So that's allowed us to get back kind of to more normal rotation. I think in the early games when he was back, it, you know, we had to get him out after a couple, two or three minutes and give him a break because he just didn't have the wind to do it. Who kind of he's playing, man, he's really good. He's really, uh, really improved from last season. Um, you know, they're, they're a team, they lead our league in the number of shots that they've had blocked. And obviously that's a big part of what we do defensively. And they do a great job of getting it up at the rim and getting up getting it up on the backboard and let Soriano clean it up on that backside. So our ability to to wipe him out uh, if Kalkbrenner or Fred goes to help is going to be really, really important. And, you know, they play with pace. They play different than anybody else. Um, so it's always a challenge. But, you know, he can score in the mid-range, you know, probably just out to the three-point line. He's comfortable shooting it, uh, efficient on the block. And like I said, is, you know, not only the one, of, not only the best rebounder in the league, but one of the best in the country. I think something good happened early. You know, even, you know, he got the couple blocked down at the other end and he kind of played through it. Um, and then we went to him right away again after that and he was able to score on their freshman. And I think, uh, you know, that just gave him some confidence and hopefully that carries over into practice the next two days. Oh, a, t a ton of pride. And, you know, the way this community has embraced uh, the pink out really from day one, uh, it's been a hit and it's kind of been that can't miss game. Uh, a game I think a lot of people from out of town try to get back to, uh, some of our players' parents try to get back to that one. So, um, you know, we've raised a lot of money over the course of 13 years. This year was no different. I think we were 27 or 28,000 in the auction and hopefully we'll raise some more uh, when the game starts. But again, if it's, it's, the money's one thing, but bringing awareness uh, to the need for early detection in the fight against cancer is why we started this to begin with. Uh, you know, that's, uh, that's why, you know, my wife was able to beat cancer because it was detected early uh, and she did what she was supposed to do uh, at the right age. Uh, so hers was able to be caught. So uh, if, if it only impacts one person in a positive way, it's certainly worth it. I didn't see who bought it yet, so hopefully it's not you because I, I would not let you beat me. Uh, but I haven't, I haven't looked at it yet. But uh, that'll be fun. Those are always good times. Thanks. Yeah, excited to have him back. I think the team was really uh, uh, there was a little bounce in their step when he showed up at the film room last week. So um, you know. It, Excited to have him back. He's been through some tough times, and uh, it's good that he can be around his basketball family. And um, you know, he brings a huge positive to that scout team. Obviously, he's done it for a couple of years and really understands it. So great to have him back. Uh, their intensity. They're a very intense team. They uh, take a lot of gambles, and uh, we just got to stay solid on our side of the court on the offensive end, not force any turnovers. Well, having time to rest is always good, but uh, I feel like everybody was in the gym, everybody was working on themselves individually. And we had a little time to work on us as a team on just little things that really affect winning. So it's major having good time. Mm. I feel like we're building momentum as a team. Uh, we're coming to we're going the right direction. Uh, we're definitely going to make up for everything that happened in the beginning of the year. Uh, just making sure our defense is on point, honestly. Uh, adding some new schemes in. Just, you know, throw, throwing teams a different look, you know, because you have all this film on us already. Now it's time to put in some new stuff. Surprise a couple of people. What do you uh, uh, they're important. Uh, 
very important. If you want to win games, you got to be able to do little things other than just scoring. You know, uh, there's always places that you could go to, you know, grab extra rebounds or dive on the floor for a loose ball. Like, give your team extra possessions to help win. I mean, yeah, definitely. I wouldn't say it's an emphasis. It's just I'm a basketball player, and I've been doing this since I was a kid, so it just feels right to do. So when the play breaks down, the big left is stretch here. Yeah, definitely. Like I said, we have some good momentum going, some good team morale. Everybody's up. We just got to keep it going. Uh, St. John's is a really good team. I mean, they have very big defensive intensity. Like, they're always in your face, especially when you play at their gym, and that small little cramped gym. It's really hard to get a, a decent shot out of them. But here, at home, uh, I don't think they have anything on us. But I'm looking forward to uh, the game, watching the matchups, and seeing how it all plays out. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Definitely. You, do notice the difference. you definitely notice the difference. It's a lot louder in here. The atmosphere is always great. So I love dollar beverage night, as you said. I'm sorry, fan, fan appreciation. Uh, can you repeat the question? I'm sorry. Yeah, can you? Oh, my defensive assignments. I mean, definitely, whenever you get a chance to guard a good player, it's always fun to see what they could do against your defense. And I like to see what other people could do against my defense. I mean, I'm not going to really try to put a deep emphasis on, yeah, I'm locking you up. I'm going to just lock you up because I know I can lock you up for real. have a hand in their face and hope for the best. Uh, I feel like, uh, you know, uh, regardless, you always got to have that self-confidence in yourself. Uh, you know, when you put in a lot of work, put in a lot of time in the gym, uh, you should always have that confidence. That's where it kind of comes from. And then obviously with the coaches and my teammates, I feel like they just always uh, give me confidence uh, when I'm out there making sure that I'm just playing hard, locked in and doing uh, what's best to help the team win. And at the end of the day, that's all that matters. And that's what I think about when I'm going in there. So, and I guess more, what do you, what do you tell yourself to maybe try to get back to what you were two years ago? Or do you feel like um, you're a better player than you were and you just haven't had the chance to show it? I mean, what, what do you, what are you telling yourself? Uh, I mean, just uh, stick with it. Uh, you know, uh, you never know when your numbers gonna be called. So just always staying ready, uh, staying ready. So you ain't gotta get ready. Uh, is what I, what I like to say. Uh, and I feel like uh, you know, just staying in the gym, listening to what my teammates and coaches tell me, and then just doing that out in practice and showing them that uh, I can be somebody they trust, and then kind of just go from there. So, and you're obviously a good defender. I guess what have you thought of the team? Just defensive, the, the word people have used around here is connectivity on defense in recent years. Uh, yeah, uh, one thing I always tell the guys out there is like, uh, no matter how the game is going up and down, always stay connected. I think that's something that uh, we've been seeing the past few games uh, as we've been winning uh, by pretty good margins. I feel like uh, that's really picked up in practice and I think it's really showing the game. So, uh, you know, staying connected, uh, you know, when teams go on runs and stuff like that, just keeping even kill, uh, like we talked about, staying connected, staying together, and uh, you know, just how to handle those things. And I feel like we've been doing a good job of that. Uh, playing them for like three years, uh, they're they're never going to change what they really do. Uh, they're a very aggressive team. Uh, want to uh, speed you up. Want to make you play fast. Uh, I feel like that's to their advantage. And uh, um, really, they're just an aggressive team trying to really uh, make rattle you. And I feel like uh, if we can handle the pressure, if we can uh, do a good job of uh, taking care of the ball and not uh, playing into their defense, I think uh, we'll be just fine. But uh, controlling their defense and uh, controlling their aggressiveness, will, uh, and then controlling that will take care of business.
Can you say that again? I'm sorry. Uh, I, th I feel like we're uh, taking the right steps in the right direction. You know, uh, you know, we still got two more games left in the Big East, so just taking one game at a time. Uh, we really can't think about whatever happened in the past, the past of the past. Uh, you got to focus on now what's in front of us. And I think we've been doing a really good job of that, uh, just trying to take it one game at a time, focus on the next opponent, and uh, really just, uh, you know, lock in on that and try to win each game and, you know, just try to take it day by day. And whatever happens uh, from here on out uh, is what the results will be. Uh, I think when you uh, you just uh, gotta really look for uh, the open man. Uh, what Mac, what Mac talked about in practice, that we always want an open shot. There shouldn't be a reason why we couldn't get an open shot, and he's uh, definitely right with that. I think uh, with an aggressive defense, they can go for a lot of ball fakes, a lot of uh, head fakes, and stuff like that. So I think utilizing that into our offense, uh, obviously the jump shot is a key component, uh, and doing all those things, I think will help us get easy buckets, and uh, and I think it will just help us uh, in the game, in the flow of the game. Uh, yeah, I think it's a great matchup for the team in general. I feel like when you see a defense like that, a team like that, that's aggressive and, uh, you know, kind of want to, like, push you out of your game for 40 minutes. I think it really helps you uh, kind of, uh, you know, find yourself uh, in a challenging moment in the situation of the game. And I think our team uh, could really do a good job of handling that. Uh, I feel like we have been doing a good job handling that as a recent year as a playing St. John. So I think uh, just really handling their, their physicality and their, act, and their activity and uh, just really, uh, you know, being up for the challenge. And I think our team is something, our team is a team that we're always up for a challenge. So definitely.